Today I'm going to make hay smoked beet dip for the bistro. So these beets um, come from the garden and they come with the big beet green on them. We chop those off and we'll use those for another recipe. So the first thing we want to do is we want to clean our beets up. So uh, always recommended to use gloves and have a surface that you're not going to stain. Tidy these up by cutting the tops and the bottoms off. Very simple. We're going to leave the peels on them. And those will come off easier after these have been cooked. So I've cleaned up all my beets. So I have actual hay here from a hay field. You can get hay in all kinds of places. You can just cut some long grass as long as it's clean. That it would probably work. So we're just going to put a bed of hay. And then we're going to put in all of our beets. Uh, so the hay is on the bottom. Then I have my beets evenly spread around. And then I'm going to put some more hay on top. So now that I have my hay, I'm going to cover up my pot and now this is going to go into the oven at 450 degrees and for quite a while probably an hour to an hour and a half all right I just pulled the beets out of the hot oven uh, they've been in there at 450 for quite a while now uh, hour and 15 minutes they've taken on some of the flavor of the hay because the hay is dried out but it's not really smoked yet so I'm going to light the hay on fire I'm just going to light the hay on fire, but I'm just going to let this go for a second here. And now I'm going to put the cover on. So you're going to want to have it in a ventilated area as well. You don't want uh, smoke filling up your kitchen. Uh, in here, I've got ventilation all around me, so the smoke is just going to dissipate to the outside of the building. So I'm just going to let it sit here and smoke and cool down because I need to peel these beets now and I don't want the beets to be screaming hot. I want to be able to handle them. So I'm just going to leave this alone maybe for 45 minutes. So we're done smoking. Uh, the beets have cooled off a bit. They're still pretty hot. I'm going to remove some of this hay to get it out of the way so I don't make a mess. So I've got my cooked beets and I'm just going to peel them. I just use a knife and basically the skins should pretty much slide off. Again, you want to use gloves because you'll stain your hands. Red stained hands are never a good look, unless it's Halloween. There's going to be a little bit of hay on here, but I'm going to give these a quick rinse before we uh, blend them up with the other ingredients, so I'm not super worried about it. And it smells awesome. It smells like the hayloft of a barn, uh, and a little bit smoky as well, because we caught some of it on fire. So now that we've dealt with our beets, we're going to assemble the beet dip and grind it all up. So the ingredients we're going to need for this step are sunflower seeds, some sort of cheese, a white cheese. I'm using feta, but I've also used ricotta or cream cheese. I have a lime, some maple syrup, and our beets. Now, the first step here is we're gonna to wanna to take our sunflower seeds and we're gonna to wanna to toast them. So I'm just gonna turn the range on high. I'm gonna warm my pan up. I have a carbon steel pan here. I could also use a cast iron pan, uh, but I don't wanna use a non-stick pan for this because you don't wanna heat a non-stick pan up really high without anything in it. So I'm just gonna add my sunflowers in. Just going to let them cook until they start to brown. I will flip it a bunch of times so that none, nothing burns. It's nice and toasty now, so we're going to add these to the blender. Then we'll add in our cheese. Let's squeeze a lime in here. I'm going to add a bit of olive oil. My maple syrup, I got a really interesting maple syrup here that's uh, been aged in oak barrels. And that's going to add a little bit more smokiness. I will add my salt, about two teaspoons of salt, maybe a tablespoon. It's up to you. And then my beets. And now it's just a matter of blending it all together. These Vitamix blenders come with a little plunger. If you ram the food down against the blade. Okay, we got it blended up and it's really thick and it's a beautiful color and a really nice smooth texture it takes a little bit of effort to get this to grind up because it's pretty thick you could add some cream to it if your blender is having a really hard time grinding it but i just generally use the plunger and uh, start and stop the blender what happens with these blenders is an uh, air bubble will tend to form around the blade when you're grinding up something that's thick and then it just stops uh, interfacing with the material that you're trying to grind. You have to sort of turn it off, give it a quick shake to pop the bubble so that the product is against the blade again. Anyway, I got it done. I have it 
to a nice smooth consistency and tastes good. I uh, don't have to add anything to it. I'm happy with the amount of salt and acid in there. When we uh, get an order for a beet dip, I'll show you how we plate it up and serve it to the customer.